Hello! For you guys who do not know, I am Kyle, and this is Plopper. We run the this YouTube channel. I haven't posted in a long time, and I promise I would post weekly, but that hasn't really happened. So, you know, I'll try to get back into it, but no guarantees because of school now. I'm just going to let Plopper do his thing and just stay on my shoulder. Do you want to... Wanna, come on, what do you... Hold up, hold up, up, give me a moment, give me a moment. Uh, come on. Well, I think I'm just gonna go like this right now. Well, yes, I'm Kyle. This little handsome devil is named Plopper. Uh, I went ahead and threw up a slideshow for you guys about Beater Dragon Diet. I know it's a PowerPoint. I know it's a slideshow. I'm not crazy about editing right now because of all the schoolwork, and I finally was able to find time to take care of this, so just bear with me. I'll be able to post this slideshow so you guys can see if you guys want to use this as a reference dude i hope you're comfortable up there okay let's get right into it so let's start out with the the very basics of how to feed a bearded dragon you really want to feed them in time frames Ex excuse me as i try to get comfortable myself you really want to feed them in time frames like i usually like to have a window of like five minutes or 30 minutes where you let them eat as much as they can and then you want to just remove all the excess food this prevents them from just like eating a little bit, going back to it, eating a little bit. It helps prevent obesity that way, because that's a big problem with these guys. You don't want a fat bearded dragon. Another thing you don't want to do is feed them food that is too large. Okay, Plopper, I need to get down for this. Come on. Ah. So this is Plopper. We're back. He's no longer on my shoulder. So you don't want to feed them food that's too large. A good reference to that is the distance between their eyes. Usually that correlates to how large their throat is. If you feed them anything larger than that, they can get stuck in their throat and, you know, they could die. So try to feed them food that's a good size. You don't want to feed them a huge, I don't know, corn dog. That's not healthy. And also, variation is key. You want to... <laughs> you don't want to feed them the exact same food over and over and over again. Maybe, like, have it this one week. Only feed them, I don't know. A uh, kale and the next week you want to feed them some kale and maybe a strawberry or maybe some apples this day Variation is key just for humans just for bearded dragons just for any animals You don't want to feed them same thing over and over again Age is really important for feeding bearded dragons because as they get older their needs for food and protein differ Okay, Plopper you ready? Can I can I move my hand so I can click the mouse? Plopper you ready? Come on, click, click the mouse ah. So when they're a hatchling to five months, you want to feed them mainly bugs. There's want to be like 60 to 80% bugs and a little bit of veggie. This is because this is the time where they're growing the most, so they need as much protein as they can to build as much uh, body mass as they can. So mainly bugs, you want to feed them multiple times a day, three to five times a day, as much as they can eat in like a 15 to 30 minute time frame. Five months to 18 months, you want to feed them about half bugs and half vegetables. They're starting to fill out more, so they still need lots of protein. But this is where they start getting more variation. They need more veggies, need more vitamins, need more, ah, need more, a little bit of everything. I hope you're comfortable. When they're adult, about 18 months or so, you want to feed them mainly vegetables. This is because they're no longer like growing outwards, and they just need the, the vitamins and the minerals to keep up their daily uptake. So, yes, they still love bugs, but you still want to feed them mainly vegetables. So... What types of food do they eat? I assume that's the main reason you're here. So I'll go ahead and cover that real quick. I have an awesome slideshow presentation <laughs> about it. Here, let me, oh, come on, almost there. Of minerals. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? As soon as you reach the table, you're just gonna stop and look at me. If you can't tell, this is a little platform to get up into the window seal. Uh, see, look, after all that squirming, it's all he's done. He just, he just wants to sit there. What do you have to say for yourself, huh? Huh? Yes, this is a camera, you're being recorded. Oh, no, there he goes. To the window seal. Okay, back to the presentation. Anyway, so, staple vegetables should be these. These are the ones that are healthy, these won't have the wide variety of minerals and vitamins. You shouldn't only feed them only one choice out of these, but you should still try to feed them one of these. Some good snack foods or snack vegetables that they could eat are these ones that I've listed here. These are the ones that, yeah, you can feed them, but you don't want to feed them this consistently because, once again, it doesn't have a wide variety of minerals and vitamins that they need to survive. 
So if you if they eat corn every once in a while, it'll be okay. If they eat carrots every once in a while, it's gonna be okay. Don't freak out. But you don't want to only feed them carrots. So make that the main staple diet. So here's some snack fruits. Once again, it's sort of like us. You don't want to only eat these fruits because they tend to be higher in sugar, more water, and not a lot of vitamins and minerals. Yeah, they can eat it. It can be like a dessert. Feed them a grape every once in a while. Maybe some banana. Maybe some raspberries. You know, it's it's tasty snack. But you don't want to feed them this consistently. Just kind of like a, a sugary treat now and then when you feel special and it's their birthday or something. Or maybe just like once a month just because you're feeling nice. Once again, it's on the left-hand side. I'm not going to read them out to you, but, you know, it's all there. Here's some staple bugs you can get them. What I use personally are mealworms and dubia roaches, mainly because crickets are really annoying to keep. They make a lot of noise at night because they're, like, croaking to each other or whatever. It's terrible. Uh, hornworms, my, my little guy doesn't like eating hornworms, so I don't feed him that. But I know hornworms are quite easy to take care of too, and I know a lot of other people take care of it. But I personally use dubia roaches because all you need is an egg carton and some food. And mealworms because all you need is some, uh, what's it called, uh, oatmeal and some food every once in a while. Keep in mind is if you're keeping these in your house, you want to just keep them in a separated container and feed them stuff that you would want your bearded dragon to ingest, right? So you don't want to feed them garbage. You want to feed them, let's say, apple slices and stuff. A good website that I use to order food for my bearded dragon is Rainbow Mealworms. They, ha they can buy, let's say, like 10,000 doobie roaches or like 10,000 mealworms for very cheap and they ship to you. Totally recommend them. Not sponsored. I'm a tiny channel, tiny person. Yeah, just I recommend Rainbow Mealworms. Check them out. It might be the best for you to if your little guy is eating tons and tons of food and you don't want to go broke. That's what I recommend get getting. Okay, these are the foods that you want to avoid feeding your bearded dragon. On the left, you can see the toxic ones. If they eat these, definitely take them to the vet because it's not good. Avocado, beets, and rhubarb, as when they're digesting in the bearded dragon, can create a poison which will kill the bearded dragon. If they eat any of these, take them to the vet right away. It's very important. Uh, bugs found in the wild. While, yes, I, I'll, I will admit I fed my bearded dragon things from the wild, you want to avoid doing this because bugs in the wild have parasites. It has, you know stuff that they eat in the wild could get into your bearded dragon you don't want them eat the compost or the garbage that you they find underneath your house don't want to do that so it's not going to directly kill your bearded dragon but you still want to avoid feeding them this bugs that glow you definitely want to avoid this the the phosphorus in the tail is poisonous to the bearded dragon so do not feed them glow bugs or anything like that and bugs that have venom such as spiders, bees, hornets, you want to avoid feeding them that too because once again, whatever's in the animal that they're eating will get into the bearded dragon and you do not want to eat bee venom, that's not healthy. Now, if you want to try it yourself, go for it. Do not feed that to your bearded dragon though. So foods that you want to avoid feeding the bearded dragon are spinach and beets. This is because as the digestion process of the bearded dragon, when they eat these, it uses up calcium and they already have a problem with calcium where they don't have get enough of it this can lead to MBD disease, which I'll get into later, but you want to avoid feeding spinach and beets to beta dragon just for that reason. It won't kill them, but you don't want to, you still don't want to feed them that. It uh, leads to problems down the line. So something else is you want to avoid feeding beta dragons when they're in the baby or juvenile stage. You want to avoid feeding them mealworms. This is because the outer shell of the mealworm is a chitin, and it's pretty hard for the beta dragon to digest, especially when they're younger. They can get constipated and they'll just kind of, you know, die from that. You want to avoid that. So I'm going to go into a little bit of death of MBD disease. This is why calcium powder is extremely important for bearded dragons. Basically what happens is uh, they need calcium to survive. So if they don't have enough calcium in the food intake, they'll start taking calcium from their bones. As you can guess, the bones start losing structure and that is pretty bad. This photo here that I have on the right isn't it looks terrible, right? But it can be so much worse for you to be the dragons because the bones are all weak and brittle. They mal, you know, they bend, they they kind of shatter. It's hugely painful for them. So I would recommend getting calcium powder or vitamin powder that contains calcium and feeding them that calcium powder, vitamin powder with every single meal just to prevent the chance of the MB, MBD disease. It's a horrible way to go and it, it feels bad for you and it's extremely painful for the bearded dragon. I'm glad that I, ha I have this, personally, a little calcium bowl. Uh, I fill it with calcium. It's all coated, right? And then I put my food inside it, and I just feed whatever's in the bowl to my bearded... Oh, voice crack. Feed whatever's in the bowl to my bearded dragon. 
It can be bugs, it can be vegetables, mix it up in there, feed it to him. It's a little, you know, snack bowl. Well, I'll thank you guys for checking this out. This is uh, my personal viewpoint on what bearded dragons can eat. 100% check this out yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. If you have any concerns where I messed up, I will edit them myself. But this is from multiple sources, this is from multiple research attempts that I have done to find out the best foods for bearded dragons. This is just an overarching view. I'm not always right. I'm a teenage boy. You still want to check these out yourself. But this is what I think. My sources will be in the, what's it called, the description below. So if you want to check them out yourself, go for it. All right, Blopper. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those too, and I'll do my best to answer. But once again, I'm a teenage boy, not a veterinarian. This is stuff that I found on the internet. Don't always trust the internet on this, folks. So... I will 100% take any recommendations or advice because I want to make sure everybody's bearded boy is okay. Hope you like these little costumes I put up here because, you know, spooky season is coming. I got Plopper a little cowboy hat. He's going to look adorable. Okay. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Kyle out. Plopper is heading out right now, if you can't tell. Seems to be, you know, having a, a good time. <laughs> I wonder what he's looking at. Oh, back up, back up he goes. Okay, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll try to post more often. But once again, no guarantees because I have tons of homework now. But, ciao, have a good one. Boop, 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 bo